Hello everyone, it's Disarray here and welcome back to the park. So we just finished riding the Octatron, I believe it's called, and uh, we had some freaky experiences with some guy in a top hat. But I now have literally no idea where to go, but I did notice that Mommy if we needs to see you, Callum. Callum, some weird blobby thing appears around notes that you can pick up. So we clearly have some psychic note-finding capabilities. Let's examine this Polaroid. Oh, I remember this. God, that face! <laughs> wow. Face only a mother could love there. Oh dear. Well, I guess we'll go this way because this is the direction. Oh, okay, and she's Treachery having some exposition, like so... A whip, and scars are insights. The first time I saw Callum, my thoughts betrayed me. I looked down at this wrinkled, red, bawling thing and I thought, Is that it? We build our world from expectations, and the world that I had built for Callum was no different. He was so real, so there, and so far from my expectations. And they shattered, and as they fell in pieces, that one treacherous thought became a new foundation. All of the love that we shared, all of the warmth and goodness that followed, built on a single traitorous thought. I mean, who looks at their baby and thinks, ah, uh, that kind of sucks. That's, that's really mean. Okay, well, there's something creepy going on in there. But let's go ahead and read this page on the window. That is, I do not like that woman in the background. She's going to appear when I finish reading the note and I'm not cool with it. I thought working in the park for a summer would be a lot of fun. But the end of the season here really drags. There aren't that many tourists around and so most of the staff spend their days standing around gossiping. And most of that gossip is about Chad. I mean, Steve, see? Even I am starting to call him Chad, and I went to school with the guy. It's that goddamn suit. In the beginning it was a laugh. Steve, the local lush, was Chad, the chipmunk. Child-friendly mascot at Atlantic Island Park. Lock up your daughters and all of that. But the more he wears that suit, the weirder Steve is getting. At first it was little things, like refusing to change out of the suit at work and taking it home with him every day. But then I saw him at Susie's diner, still wearing it. And it wasn't even a work day. Some of the staff complained discreetly to park management about the smell. And I saw him walking and talking with Mr. Winter, the owner, one day. But nothing seems to have changed. The suit still smells like a carcass whenever Steve walks by. And apparently Steve has picked up some new skills since the last time I saw him puking up in a gutter outside the cycle station. Because he sure as hell can carve a mean ice sculpture. Those shapes he makes in the ice, though, they give me the creeps. Steve came by the booth today, lucky me, and he just hung around for a while. I couldn't really tell because of the suit, but it seemed like he was just staring at me, sizing me up. I fucking me, whatever he was doing. I asked him what he wanted and he just stood there, not saying anything. Eventually I called my supervisor and when he came by, Chad, S Steve, wandered off. My supervisor told me to put everything in writing, so here it is. Also, I quit. I don't want to see that chipmunk suit ever again, Laura Henman. Oh god, what did I tell you guys? I knew she was going to be there when I stopped reading the note. Stupid biatch, get away from me. I'm not cool with this. I'm not cool with your shenanigans right now. So what's with the creepy bird thing? Is this their secondary mascot? I guess it's like some weird ductopus. Strange, anyway. I'm, gu I'm guessing it's meant to be an octopus because the ride that it was on was called the Octatron, but it just looks like a duck. Like a side duck with three eyes and tentacles. This looks interesting. Bumper. Bumper cars, okay. Fair enough, let's go ahead and try out the bumper cars, I suppose. Hello! Constant crashes and 80s music. I guess it floats someone's boat. Callum, There's something to do with this car go? over here. I'm not sure if we can actually ride, like, legitimately ride the bumper cars, but we'll, we'll at least check this out. Examine device. was pretty intense. Oh, we're freaking out again. It's not a good sign. Mommy needs to see you, Callum. Is there anything else over here? Where are you? Okay. Come out, sweetie. Ah, there's something over there. Fair enough. This this is really useful, this blobby ability that we've got. 
I forgot I can run. I should probably start doing that because otherwise this game is going to take far too long to actually play. Come to mommy, Callum. Okay, it's this car over here, the one with the headlights on. An accident report. Brief description of the accident or incident. During the transport of the bumper cars into the arena, one of the straps attaching the load to the trunk came untied, causing a cascade of bumper cars onto Francis, who was standing directing the driver. Francis was crushed by the weight of the cars. Francis was killed. Oh dear, this park has not had very good luck. Well, it wouldn't have really helped to see a doctor, but I suppose that's fine. Dexter, the truck driver, claims to have seen someone on the back of the load undoing the straps. Nobody else reported seeing that. The sheriff has requested that Dexter provide them with a urine samples. Double checking of the straps after transit should be mandatory and drug screenings for all drivers. So they think he was on drugs and that he caused the incident, I suppose. What's going on here? Oh, we're, yeah, we're just going to stand here whilst this car destroys us. Okay, or it just goes that way. I'm guessing that's unlocked like a new direction for us to go. So let's go check out that bumper car then, shall we? Stay where you are. Well, that was slightly freaky, I'm not gonna lie. Just drove itself right past us. I'm watching you, stupid bumper car. Right, let's head up these stairs, see if there's anything new to look at. Mommy is coming, Calm. I should remember to keep pressing um, it's a of public record that I the right click as a mother. Once, when Callum was very small, I left him asleep in the car while I ran an errand. Don't even remember what it was. When I came back, the sheriff was standing next to the car, watching my boy through the window. I didn't like what I saw in his eyes. Judgment. He wrote me the ticket without saying a word. Just a scratch scratch of his pen on the notepad. When he gave it to me, our eyes met. I know what you're going through. My daughter, Helen, she... Just get some help. Help was a bolt of lightning. Help was a thousand volts surging through my veins. Help is agony. I'd rather die. I wanted to scream. I'd rather you pulled your gun and shot me. But instead my mouth said, Yes, Sheriff. Okay, she's got some problems. She's definitely got some problems. Let's go ahead and read this. Continually delayed by the incompetence of the builders. The problem is that they are local and so they believe a lot of the rumours about that old man Henderson used to do here. They grew up on those towers. Every time a bolt comes loose or a wrench goes missing, those fools are crossing themselves against the black magic. Of course that is why I chose this site over all the other potentials. Solomon Island is a nexus for dark energies and the thought of all that power just dissipating beneath the earth here, it makes my skin crawl. I called in a few favours back in Brooklyn and got someone at the local academy to see if they had any interesting books about local history. Turns out they do, and it turns out that old man Henderson has some pretty strong connections to the Brooklyn crowd. Perhaps something he wrote will help me find the piece of the plans that I am missing. So do we get to ride the ferris wheel now? Because I'm a little excited about that, I'm not gonna lie. I am terrified of heights, IRL. So... I'm not a big fan of amusement parks, so games like this, well not particularly like this one, but games where you can ride amusement park rides without, you know, getting all the butterflies and stuff like that. Stay where you are! I kinda like that stuff. So it means I can enjoy the sights without having to endure the shittiness. <laughs> I know a lot of people like them, but I I I don't. I just I just can't hack that shit. So they are going to close this place down. Doesn't surprise me. After touring the park, riding the rides, and viewing the startling number of incidents suffered here in the park, it is it is this inspector's opinion that Atlantic Island Park should be shut down until Nathaniel Winter comp complies with all safety regulations. While I understand that there is a sensitive political relationship between Mr. Wilter, Winter and the Senator, I nevertheless suggest that such political considerations be set aside in condemning Atlantic Island Park. The rides at first glance appear well constructed and maintained, but the sheer number of incidents in the park during the last few years, and during construction, led me to believe that there is something wrong at the base level of construction and we should close the park and fully investigate these flaws. To wit, here is a partial list of the fatalities, well, very unlucky park, in the park since opening only two years ago. A family of three killed when a roller coaster cart derailed. 
14, se 14 separate incidents of broken bones and crushed ribs while riding the Octatron. Wow, we were, we were, we were lucky. Three that's, suicides are hardly the park's fault, to be fair. Three suicides from the top of the Ferris wheel. A child seriously injured on the escalator. Over a dozen children are reported missing in the House of Horrors since its construction. One report of a drowning in the Tunnel of Tales. The sheer volume of incidents means that it is my strongest recommendation that Atlantic Island Park be closed immediately. That is unfortunate. Okay, so we need to decrease the speed so we can go ahead and get on. I don't know if I need to keep pulling this, I just do it because it makes me feel better about the fact that the ride keeps going. <laughs> Let's go ahead and jump on the ferris wheel. Look, he's in there again! So he's the guy that's starting the rides. I wonder what she expects just getting in the cars when there's nobody at the, uh, the levers, but... Oh well. The sky looks very pretty here. In fact, it all looks quite pretty. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm digging the fog. Gives this place an extra creepy feel that we just needed, obviously. People come into your life for a reason. Dad used to say that before Mom ran off. After that, he mostly just drank. Things were different for Don and I. When we met, I was sweeping the floor at Susie's diner. He came in with some workers, but he didn't try to flirt or cop a feel like the others. He just ordered a coffee and sat there, watching me. When my shift was over, he offered to walk me home. I don't know how to describe that walk. We talked and laughed and eventually kissed. It felt like love. It felt like a fairy tale. I can't tell you if Callum was made that night or one of the ones that followed. But I think it has to be that night. That one perfect night. Don and I moved in together, but then, well, <laughs> he died. According to the supervisor, his safety harness failed when he was working on the top of the Ferris wheel. Don was there one moment, and then gone. Sometimes people leave your life for no reason. I was three months pregnant with Callum. Fairy tale fucking over. That's a sad story. But I've got to say, if somebody was in, like, at my place of work, just staring at me the entire time I was working, I would not let them walk me home. I would consider them a stalker and probably avoid them to the best of my ability. Are you still there, creepy guy? I have no idea where I should head next. Yep, there he is. Good old top hat guy. My favourite guy. I'm kind of confused as to where we should go next, actually. Callum! Tell mommy where you are! Are there any blobby things? Where are you, Callum? Uh I'm guessing Callum, where did you go? This way. I can't remember what way I came in, so. I should probably do a better job of remembering which directions I've gone. Can I read the map at all? Where is me? Callum? Callum! Where are you? Callum! Okay, I just remembered that this was actually the way I came from, so I should probably go ahead and try the other direction. Because I haven't been this way yet, and the other way was clearly a dead end. Okay, so what's waiting for me in this direction? I notice we have a house of horrors to attend. I'm quite interested about that one. Oh, so that's a derailed ferris wheel cart there. I would not get on a ferris wheel if this was the site I saw outside. I'm not cool with that. Oh, oh, a ticket. Well, that was oddly convenient because I couldn't get that way a second ago. <laughs> Thank you, rogue roller coaster cart. Oh, not roller coaster. Ferris wheel cart. That was what I meant. Okay, if you could stop freaking out for for one second so that we can sprint a bit, that would be I would be most obliged. Come on, come on, lady, get yourself together. We need to do some sprinting. Otherwise, we're gonna be here a, lot of a people while. Idolize their children. You hear them talking about their kids and just the way they talk? Their fucking voices make me want to vomit. 
My angel likes to read, and little Johnny is so good on the piano. Fuck those people! You give up nine months of your life carrying them, you traumatize yourself giving birth to them, and then you spend the rest of your life as their slave. Wiping asses, mopping a piss, feeding them, little life-sucking monsters who take and take and take until... <sighs> we all go insane. Any parent who pretends otherwise is just dishonest. That's called choice supportive bias. I am honest. Callum really grinds my gears, and he owes me everything. Everything! It served the little fuck right if I just abandoned him. She definitely has some problems. I mean, I'm not much of a kid person. I don't desire to have children. But if I did have children, I sure I as hell wouldn't talk about one. them like that. Never got around to do it before. Well, I guess let's abandon our fucking child, as you said. You really wanted to do, and go on a roller coaster. I suppose that is a legit thing to do. Ooh. See, you want? roller coasters are things that I have the most problem with. Callum. Who am I talking what to? What have you done to him? I? That's insulting. You and your boy are everything that this place doesn't want. The antithesis of what we stand for. Where is Callum? The poor child. He tried so hard to do what he was taught. He even left you a trail of breadcrumbs. But the park is just so hungry. Tell me where my son is. The witch has him now. Has both of you. No happy ending here, I'm afraid. Just... just leave me alone. Fool. You always were. I can't help but feel like our character is just mentally ill and she's just imagining all of this. Oh god. This is disturbing. I am much dislike with this part. So we I don't I have no idea what that said. If anybody wants to pause and comment. I'll be cool with that. Maybe we shouldn't have come on the roller coaster today. Seems like it was maybe a bad choice. I mean, this hospital is is, is not very safe. Oh, hello. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Didn't expect that. That's an interesting turn of events right there. Let's get the hell off of this thing. Can't wait. Really just can't. So it appears that the witch from maybe Hansel and Gretel, the one that we heard about in the first ride, has possibly taken Callum. And we should be concerned about that, but we probably aren't because we're apparently a mega bitch. So there. Okay, let's head on out. Are there any notes to read? Oh, hello. A flashlight? Well, I could have used that probably about half an hour ago. The witch. I'm honest. So where is this witch? Let me at her. Let me at her. I'll just, I'll destroy her with my fists. Okay. Callum has bruises on his arms. Finger marks. Someone has been hurting him. I've asked him. Demanded, really, to know where he got the marks. But he doesn't want to answer me. Something has scared him into silence. Doesn't dare talk. He's been changing too. Something sinister lurks in the darkness behind his eyes. I catch him staring at me at odd moments. In the night, he tosses and turns and cries out words that I cannot understand. When I try to soothe him, he snaps and bites at my fingers. I think he wants to talk to me. I think he wants to tell me. They are watching him, every minute of every day. They are whispering to him in his sleep, changing him. They are taking my baby away from me. I can save him. There will be pain. But I love him, and in the end, he will understand why. 
Okay, well that was definitely quite creepy. I think that she was harming him herself, but she was having a bit of a funny five minutes about it, trying to convince herself that she wouldn't do that sort of thing. I'm just, I'm just guessing, but this is how I see it going. She's definitely unhinged in some way. But I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. If you have enjoyed what you saw, then don't forget to leave a like. And if you have any requests for horror games you would like me to play, go ahead and leave a comment below. And until next time, goodbye.